start talking about the first match. This is going to be Aqualix taking on West Garfield Park, the seventh and sixth teams. Although they are close in the standings, Connor, I wouldn't say Aqualix has had the same stage that Westfield West Garfield Park has had. That is a mouthful. Yeah, Aqualix started off strong. They beat Gaming Gladiators. They got their forfeit win against the Heist. And then ever since then, they've been really downhill with pretty much only Afer having consistency across every single game. Last game that they played against took the kids yesterday. It was a messy, gritty one. But at the end of the day, it was a two horse race. It was Tragical and Mr. B against Afer and Gasher. But overall, with the way that Afer has been playing, he's a very consistent fragger and arguably one of the most consistent fraggers in all of Challenger League right now. He's in a system that enables him, and you really got to keep your eyes. For, you know, the man Angelo Ferrari, that's his full name, Afer, that's where it comes from. The cold name, and he's <laughs> kind of a cold gun. <laughs> Tanner, one of the things that you mentioned as you were going through the standings is some of the teams down near the bottom that maybe we didn't expect to see. But the sad reality is, is when we've got this much parity in the league, you're going to see teams. Someone has to be near the bottom. Now, we look over at West Caulfield Park, even though they're sitting a position above a sixth place for a sixth place team they're looking good like you, you wouldn't think that they'd be sixth yeah they definitely have you know come into their own throughout this stage you the team is like they they had to do a big shake up somewhere in the middle um you see bio going back to that support role and instantly you know now you see west garfield park they're on this big win streak right now uh, you see uh players like rudy coming in something for for snake and he just slotted right in everything seems to be very very uh coherent as a team right now they're very coordinated they're getting their trades they're attacking drones the core fundamentals are really solid and you know rudy he came in yesterday he had one heck of a showing especially as a sub player and as bio said in his interview a player that is you know not playing the game anymore it was really nice to see you know rudy come in and absolutely come in and perform and not look like uh uh like a ball and chain for the rest of west garfield park mm -hmm. now going back to aquilix connor one of the things that coming into the stage that we discussed was the Lagasher system and cleaning things up a bit, not being as reckless, having a bit more structure. In this process though, have they kind of seemed to maybe lose a bit of that flair and along the way, maybe it's bit them a little bit? It's a really hard way to describe the way that Aqualix is currently playing. It seems like they're in an awkward gray area of being a structured team versus being a very aggressive team. They haven't quite leaned into either side. So for this matchup against West Garfield Park, I think that they would find a lot of success if they kind of doubled down on their attacks and were just really getting a little bit more aggressive. There's been gaps in their drone work that we saw really exposed yesterday mm -hmm. with Took the Kids, where maybe if instead of droning out a room or two ahead, then sending your entry in, you just have Afer, you have Psychosis right on that drone. You just get right up in there. You're playing the trade game. You're trying to really get the ball moving on the attacking front. And even when sort of on the map fan side, we were, Tanner, we talked a lot about how their shower map pool has been hurting mm -hmm. a lot. And you already also mentioned the bio interview where he said that Rudy doesn't play those new maps. Yeah. <coughs> Villa. <coughs> yeah. Uh, Sorry. Uh, is that foreshadowing? I, please, don't, please don't tell me that's foreshadowing. <laughs> I hope not. I really hope not. <laughs> Oh, man. But for West Garfield Park, the biggest thing that I'm looking for is I'm looking for that main, maintain of consistency. Like mm -hmm. I said, they're on a hot streak right now. They played three really good games, some of them against very good teams. Um, and they, they just they seem to be coming into their own as a team, which you really like to see things like, you know, good trade fundamentals, good uh, anti drone information, um, good IGLing. Their, their executes are looking pretty solid. And for me, that's like the biggest thing is if they can maintain that tempo and that, that pressure that they've been putting on these teams. I think they're going to go a long way. And then the second thing, you know, you are playing against Aqualix. You're going to have to be prepared for the chaos. We saw yesterday on Villa, Aqualix versus Took the Kids. That game was a slug match. Nothing was making sense. Teams were throwing in curveballs everywhere. Random runouts, random spawn peaks. If West Garfield Park's going to have any chance at winning today, they need to be ready at the three-minute mark. They need to be ready for that random chaos. They need to be able to adapt. And I think they can do that. I mean, they've got a really good IGL in bio. They've got Rudy who thrives in the chaos. You know, these are two players that I think are going to absolutely stand out this game uh, in terms of, you know, making sure that they're managing that chaos. Now, the unnuanced version of the little joke there, uh, West Garfield Park, they've played Villa twice, which, hey, mm -hmm. out of six matches, fair amount. Connor, as we get into this map, you know, Aqualix has played it four of their six matches. Yeah. And starting off, the chalet ban makes sense. Same with the cafe. It's just kind of play style kind of things. 
West Garfield Park looked really strong on Cafe against Carnica, well, historically strong. Chalet team. So, Oregon Club bans as well. Neither of these teams want to go to those equalizers with, you know, West Garfield Park's Oregon being a little bit more strong than Aqualix's clubhouse. And then we go into the part that I'm not a fan of. We see the new map bans from Aqualix, Down Goes Theme Park. A response of Skyscraper does make sense on the side of West Garfield Park, considering what Bio said in his interview. No, no, don't. No, don't and do then that. Aqualix doubles down and takes away two new map bands that most likely would have been taken away by West Garfield, considering that they have a sub. I'm not a fan of that because mm. it leaves it up to Villa and Bang. And we hmm. kind of all know what happened with West Garfield Park playing bank against the heist. It was one of the worst games in history. So <laughs> a very obvious choice towards Villa that Aqualix has looked very shaky on. But so for some reason, keep on going back to it. For me, that screams that either they're underperforming on the map and they feel like they're better, or they just have an absolutely horrible map pool that... If this is kind of like the shining jewel of it, it's a very, very dull gemstone. Well, whether it's shining, whether it's not shining, depending on their results, Tanner, it, at some point, don't you have to think, hey, the other team has a ton of VODs of us doing Villa. Everything we've ever thought of to do on Villa is on video from the last few weeks. It's there, it's ready, it's available. What could the thought, possible thought process be going or letting this map go because they didn't ban it but they let the decision go to the way of west garfield park yeah i don't know i think it's just you know, a comfort pick you know maybe they're mm -hmm. trying to like absolutely iron out this villa gameplay um maybe they're trying to hide map pools for for future games versus future opponents i don't know i think it's a mistake to let them go back to villa like i said west garfield parks looked really strong on it recently um and leaving it between bank and villa like those are the two options aqualix are going to let it go to you know bank is a map that west garfield park likes to go to that's been a perma ban for aqualix as a map mm -hmm. that you know i felt like when it went to the decision it might have been a trap for aqualix as well like or like a trap for west garfield park because aqualix like i said has been perma banning that map all stage let it go to decider is there something there i don't know um but at the end of the day you know bio didn't want to take the bait he's got rudy on his team he's got to play it safe he's got to play a map that rudy feels comfortable on you know maybe beast coast back in the day wasn't comfortable on bank so you know bio just playing it safe making sure we're going to a map that they feel comfortable on had good results on yesterday they can iron out those kinks there's not a lot of time to do a lot of counter work like you were uh uh suggesting there um for mm -hmm. for west garfield park um, just because like, you're, you're playing with a sub, the only person who's going to be really able to pay attention and focus yep. in on any of that is going to be Bio. But that's, I would say, say that's a main point, Connor. Like, considering the option that they knew that they're playing with a sub, we heard in the interview yesterday that, oh, we can't really play those other maps with the sub because we're, we're barely practiced with them. Is this not like a major missed opportunity to kind of pounce on that? If you are going to try a new map, now's the time when the other team is less set to do it. Mm -hmm. That's why it was a critical point. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was pretty important. But for Aqualix, maybe they just don't have the new maps. Which, mm -hmm. shame on you if you do not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are actively loading up a gun and shooting yourself in the foot. But, I mean, as things stand, Aqualix as Villa, it's not horrible. They took, took the kids all the way to Max OT, which they arguably could have won that game. It was very close. A lot of like really gritty down to the wire rounds of just hero plays here and there. But with that being said, if Afer doesn't pop off like we saw yesterday, that game is over in regulation a lot quicker than Max OT. That's probably like a 7 2 7 3 victory for Took the Kids. Now, okay, West Garfield Park, Tanner, talk about them really quick for me. When we're looking at Villa, going up against Aqualix. You, you, you would say that your work is cut out for you. It's obvious what you have to do. But at the same time, you you cannot let this slip through. Does that add a bit of pressure in a way of saying, like, this seems like it should be an obvious win? What happens if things go awry? Yeah, I feel like this is definitely West Garfield Park's game to lose. Like, like I said, they're making this this great uh, three three game run. They're trying to climb up the standings. Every point matters in each mm -hmm. stage. So getting these games where this should be a sure thing, you've Got a very consistent. Uh, I was very impressed with West Garfield Park's like Villa defenses specifically. Last uh, last game, they they have multiple strats on each site. They they have strats where they're increasing the tempo, slowing it down. Like this is a game where and and like if you watch the Aqualix TTK game, it was it was rough. It was a rough mm -hmm. watch. 
And if Wes Garfield can just, you know, stay composed, not let that pressure get to them, which I think they can do because they have players like Bio and Rudy on the team, you know, that good leadership, that veteran core. Um, I don't think they should feel too much pressure. They just need to go out there, play the game they know how to play, and get that W, which they should be getting. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been a ton of play on Villa over this weekend, but we've got the map cleaned up once again to send the players right back in. It's going to be Aqualix, West Garfield Park. We're going back to Italy. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Jonah. Everyone, back. I'm Harrison. As always, but instead of John, I have the love of my life back in, <laughs> back in the booth. You've come crawling back to me, Jonah, haven't you? Yes, I have. It is it is really good to be back. Obviously, sick last week, wasn't feeling great, had to give up uh, my position to fellow for a day. But it's good to be back, and it's good to see you know these CL teams again going at it. It is not good to see Villa. I am very Ooh. sad about that, given that we have so many exciting new maps in the pool and teams could be bringing out so much creativity, and yet they just decide not to do so. Connor mentioned it on the desk. Aqualix have played this map four times out of six maps they've played or six best of ones they've played, four of those best of ones have been on this map, and it is painful to say that we are going back there again. But this game is important, Harrison, for a couple of reasons. Obviously, both of these teams, they're sitting at a turning point in the season. We're halfway through the stage now. West Garfield Park and Aqualix, they are sitting at six and seven on the overall leaderboard, respectively. 12 points for West Garfield, 10 for Aqualix. Both of these teams would love a little three-point boost today to get them into that upper half of the leaderboard for the remainder of the season. Yeah, you definitely said, I mean, now that we're pretty much in the halfway point, well, the halfway point, points are going are so important from now on. I mean, every game is important, obviously, in a best-of-one round round, but now is when the teams are going to start to realize, guys, we got to buckle down. We need to win the rest of our games if we want to be in you know, that top or a position heading into the next stage. Focusing on the operator bands, they are pretty stock standard. The only one that's maybe not as common is the Nomad band, but, I mean, the fact that it's these two teams playing Nomad does, definitely doesn't surprise me. They are both tend to be kind of in your face. At least West Garfield have been of recent. I have been loving their role changes. Uh, West Garfield have been on that up and up, you know, as the analyst desk has kept highlighting. After they put Bio back on that hard support, moved Valor to an entry role like he's used to, like we've seen him, you know, way back on the original Aqualix and in T3, Valor has always been a star entry. Wes Garfield has never looked better. Meanwhile, Aqualix, though, they looked really good in week one and seem to almost be on a steady decline. Well, as uh, Wes Garfield are taking a moment to actually get everything settled before uh, they jump into the lobby, I actually wanted to take care of an important order of business here. And I hope our wonderful producer, Ferme, is listening in because I need to change my prediction from Aqualix <laughs> to Wes Garfield. And the reason I'm doing that is I had no idea what map we were going to when that prediction was made initially. But now we're going to be shifting over to Wes Garfield because Aqualix going to this map again, Wes Garfield having some positive results on this map in the past. It just screams West Garfield. And maybe now I'll be, you know, looked on even more of a clown if Aqualix are able to take this win or dominantly at that at the end of Villa. But I really do think this situation favors West Garfield. And I gotta really want to get my prediction percentage up there. Tanner is setting uh, an impressive standard ever since he got here. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I've been doing too hot. No. I mean, 58, been... 50 is the same, you know. I have been trolled multiple times. It's not my fault. The teams just should be better. Not on me. Fair. You know what was really killing me? After the like the relegation game that Outlast played against Okami, I was like, man, Outlast are looking like they're on the they're on the come up. They're yeah. looking pretty good. And then they just haven't won a single game. And I keep putting my faith in them. I mean, I learned my lesson, but they've been a little uh a little too late. And speaking of losing my faith, Aqualix have been kind of the same story. I really thought Aqualix was gonna look good heading into mm -hmm. the season, especially picking up like Rice, who has been a T3 demon, Psychosis, who is a standout performer in every CL stage he's played uh, thus far, but something's not clicking. Aqualix, they looked like they were going to play that structured game in the beginning of stage one of this year, and then have kind of reverted back to that old, you know, super aggressive play style, which in and of itself is not bad, but the biggest criticism of Aqualix has always been that they just face check. They face check, they overstay their welcome, they don't drone enough, and they're falling back into those old habits. Thing is, I mean, through three play days, Aqualix, those three wins that they have, I mean, 
it came from the first three days. It was over Game and Gladiators, which is seems a little bit more impressive now than it did in week one. Now that the Game and Gladiators have kind of come into their own and continue to improve. They took down the Heist, which again, meaningless, but they took down Nocturnes, which is something because Nocturnes right in week one took one shot down seven to five on, on, on a theme park, I think it was. And they really ended up putting on a pretty good performance there. Obviously, Nocturnes faltering a little bit as the stage go along, but it does seem that for Aqualix, it is a similar story. They start off really strong, and then things start to fall away. Maybe it's because they keep going to Villa, and teams are getting a read on their Villa. Just a thought. That's... Just a thought. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's kind of two ways you can flip the, the Villa pick, right? Like, on the one hand, Aqualix have played this map four times. I mean... I don't know how much Aqualix can continue to vary their strats. I know Tanner was talking about, you know, how good uh, Aqualix uh, looked on their, or not Aqualix, how good the teams looked on their defenses with both of them having multiple strategies uh, for each hold. But I don't know how much Aqualix are going to be able to deviate from their normal plan. On the flip side, West Garfield Park have a sub. There is only so much that they're going to be able to pull out without Snake, with Rudy, and perhaps, I, I guess Aqualix might be betting that West Garfield have already showed their entire hand yesterday. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, unfortunate news, we do have to sort out some technical issues with one of these players. So we are going to send lost. it to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have this game hopefully getting started. See you in a moment.
We're back. We're back. Moss has been tamed. No more Moss issues, because that's what that was. Took a little bit to get everyone back in the lobby, because I think uh, someone on Aqualix's Uplay has been a little buggy. But we're in, and the game will resume. Hopefully, we don't need any more rehosts. Of course, Jonah Aqualix starting on the defense, bringing out AVG first. Something that was a big focal port, uh, focal port, Attack focal point. Uh, I remember in the uh, in the Aqualix game yesterday, were those main stairs takes. They were uh, they were not great from either team. Were Aqualix especially uh, adapted or adept at uh, stopping said takes? Ye uh, yes and no. I remember at one point. Uh, Someone on ATK uh, during an uh, during uh, an off stream game, someone on ATK ended up just rushing main stairs with sledge shotgun oh my. and killing the guy playing there. So I I mean throughout That's their entire history, Oculus have been very up and down with the main stairs hold, and West Garfield as well very up and down with the main stairs take. Interesting though that Rudy is going to swap off of I believe that was a nade opera. I think it was sledge or something uh, onto Jack. Okay, so bringing out some sort of roam denial here on the attacking side. Useful, especially because we have both Slime and Afer positioned all the way on this master side. They've got a couple of reinforcements in front of them as well to hold this extension for, I suppose, a few seconds or maybe as long as they can. They don't seem too inclined to back away just yet as Wes Garfield begin to work their way into the building. A nade here from Barring will get burned out as he works his way in to Master itself. Slime and Afer still lurking around. Afer hoping not to get droned out as Wes Garfield look to figure out what kind of extension they're dealing with. I guess now we see that purpose of the Jackal, right? With Mute Jammers about, with the Vigil Scanner. He, roamers can be pretty difficult to track down with those drones, so who can aid that? The Jackal. You just scan footprints, and there's really nothing the defenders can do about it unless they're, unless they're Cav, I guess. Uh, but we... Never see her in competitive... Well, oh, I shouldn't say never. Almost never see her in competitive play because she kind of sucks. But now that the attackers have fully moved in through Master, they're starting to take underneath as well. And the roamers keep falling back more and more. I imagine at some point we'll start seeing the people from West Garfield nading through the floor. Well, they are trying to get this 90 cross. They do have the cutoff from that 90 window. And now that they have successfully forced these roamers to back to the site, like you said, Harrison, they can take that control all the way up to 90. They've got all of their attackers in the proper position to get something done. And you can see from this top-down view all of those Aqualix outlines as they are positioned on this south side of the map. You've got three on the site itself, one top main stairs and one tucked over in study. That is, again, Afer hoping to be on that vigil, the player who is a little bit challenging to drone out. So if West Garfield do eventually rotate around to that study side, they could get cut off there. But like you said, the pressure below is now building a Beautiful nade from Valor to kick off the round. Gets a kill onto Rice. He'll look for a second, but this one doesn't look like it's going to come up with much. However, it will deny any sort of a mute jammer that was positioned on that wall. So in no time, those x Cairo's pellets can get detonated. Uh, the jammer is also uh, around the side of the wall, like in games itself, which is why you only see some of those x Cairo's being blown up. But hey, I mean, they have a, a bit of an opening into Vault, so they've got a sight line. Just no entry point. And if that's all they wanted, then hey, they can try shoving that diffuser through the skull doorway and into vault, which is the primary plant spot that we usually see in a take like this. They've also managed to completely circumvent all of that main stairs hold, but Afer, just through the smoke, I presume, is going to get a big double kill. Psychosis, another one before there's a double kill from West Garfield to trade. Even man count, but there's Gasher waiting through the smoke to get the reattempt of the plant, and that leaves Barring alone in a 1v2 with no time to play with. Three seconds remaining, and everyone from Aqualix is playing passive. Well, I say that as Gasher peeks out, but he's not going to die, so no harm, no foul. Aqualix take round number one. Yeah, opening round, a patient AVG hold from those last two players just sitting back knowing that Barring simply had no time to get anything done with 10 seconds left. He had to either find a way to get the bomb down, pretty much impossible, or find both of those kills. Impossible if Aqualix played it smartly enough, and they did. It started off pretty clean from West Garfield. They worked their way in the map relatively expeditiously clearing up through 90 but when it came time for that execute aqualix they never overextended themselves they sat back they played those trades and they made sure that if they were taking a gunfight somebody would be behind them ready to either 
take that fallen defender's position or take the gunfight right back in response. Became that frag fest that we often see on the site when you cross that 20 second threshold, but West, uh, West Garfield just not able to fully push in and get the frags they needed. So a good start for the defense. And not a lot of explosives uh, to deal with either, right? Because Barring used both of his, I think, on the roam clear. Valor used his underneath to clear one of the mute jammers as well as a kill. But in flushing out important anchor positions, there wasn't much. And in doing so, Oculix were forced to use their smokes to try and cut off lines of sight, you know, disable those crossfires being held from Oculix. And what was the response? Afer pushed into it. I'm not sure if he got those kills through the smoke, because again, you know, the skull door is a very thin doorway. It's a bottleneck. If you're just spraying bullets wildly, you're bound to hit something. He ended up getting two kills. I don't know if he got them through the smoke itself or as West Garfield uh, pushed, like, past the smoke. But either way, Aver was there to stop them, and smokes worked both ways. Defense can't see you, but you can't see the defender either. So I really like what Afer, uh, how Afer positioned himself in that round. I mean, Afer has been... I would say Afer has been the star performer for AQ thus far this stage, and he's looking to, and they're going to really need him to step up like that uh, in these coming rounds against West Garfield. Well, this round especially, because West Garfield are throwing out at least one element of a surprise. That is Rudy on the Amaru, positioned right now outside of Astro, that Astro window, currently droning this out for the second time, hoping to make an entry, but right now it's Barring who finds himself in the sight. He picks up Gasher as he walks in. Twist follows that up with a kill of his own, and Rudy, as he hops in the window, he takes down Slime, leaving it all on the shoulders of Rice, just like that, in a one versus three. Barring will provide the cutoff while the rest of the team gets over to the site to get something done. Now Rice finds himself in a crossfire, and he is in a load of trouble. On one HP, with Twist holding him from Boar with now two players pushing in Statuary. He has got to find some kills with this SMG-11 and yeah, Twist is not going to allow that to happen. A very quick rush attempt from West Garfield. Patience droning it out, but once they found out it was clear, they just sent it in and it worked. Aqualix, I guess, too far afield on their roam. We saw a lot of setup being placed over towards the study side of things for an AVG roam. Someone was even downstairs. And I guess West Garfield figured, you know what? If the only people on site are Gasher and Rice, we might as well take the 5v2. Barring was allowed to simply walk into Bricks, get his freebie. Rice was trying to hold on, and while he was able to get, uh, I think, a kill or two to his name, West Garfield not only established themselves in the site itself, but also prevented the fallback from Aqualix as the roamers attempted to aid their companions on site by defaulting back. West Garfield caught them, either just caught them in the rotation or were holding the angles so that Aqualix walked into him. Very well played from West Garfield to answer back to that Aqualix round. And that's, you know, might be, again, just that experience from Bio as an IGL shining through. Well, that call, we actually saw that, you know, set up even during the prep phase because, of course, with that sixth pick that we have talked a lot about over the last few weeks, it allows you to make some on-the-fly attacker operator adjustments. They did that. They brought out the Amaru, and they sat him outside that Astro window, giving him the opportunity to just, you know, use that grappling hook, just rappel in uh, at a moment's notice. And while that play wasn't really the... I would say the spark that lit the fire of that execute, it certainly was impactful and it was able to get at least one kill. Ended up taking down Slime with that aggressive maneuver from there. It really was Barring though who opened up that round just by stepping in through that brick store straight into Statuary and taking those fights. But on to round three now, we're going to see Barring once again making a pretty aggressive entry, this time on the Ash, trying to track down Slime who is hoping to slow down these entry players just a little bit. Looks like he's about to get droned out by Twist. And, oh, wait. Maybe not. Did did it not turn around? Because nope. Nick, Slimy Nick didn't shoot it. I don't think they're aware. Barring is just going to town on the ceiling above him. Slimy Nick could potentially make a monstrous play. There's someone just to his right. That's Twist, the man who himself may have just misdroned this Malusi. But for now, Nick is playing very passive. He doesn't want to spoil his opportunity you know, just in case he didn't get misdrone, but Twist holding the other angle, he's got no idea. Nick, if you're going to do something, do it now. I mean, obviously, he doesn't have the same kind of info as we do, but as Twist starts to move out of Mudroom, Nick will back off as well. Luckily, Afer's here to spring into action. He'll end up getting that opening pick, but 
I am a little sad because that pick from Afer might just spoil Nick's play. Yeah, he likely won't be able to do much else, but still, a lot of pressure being applied. The fact that Nick is still there, Afer was still applying pressure. They have wasted so much time off this clock, and now Wes Garfield have to find a way to get out of this timing hole that they find themselves in. They do have a minute and 10 seconds left on this clock, but Barring still nervous that there could be someone lurking around, while the rest of his team is focused on trying to pressure this bomb site. It's not going to work because Barring has failed. There's Nick who steps up. It's Afer who goes for a double and takes down Valor, leaving Rudy and Bio alone to fend for themselves here. A turn of events really on the shoulders of two Aqualix roamers who just tore apart this attack. And I guess that might be down to the mist room. Not only not seeing Nick, who ended up getting that kill from the back earlier, but also Afer stepping up and getting a double kill, just like we talked about in the previous rounds. He has been that driving force, and he looks to continue that. Bio will get one pick back for his team onto Psychosis as he walks through the breach and is allowed to retreat back. No trade from Aqualix at all, but they might not be too concerned with it. They're only losing one man and are still in a four versus two. And look, they have all turtled up. They are just holding angles. They are not swinging, with maybe the exception of Slimy Nick. Asher holding onto the breach, though, will get full blinded. But Bio, no! Oh, no! What a whiff! Yeah, he missed he had a for most of the bag there. Right there. I mean, Rudy died off screen. There wasn't really a lot of hope for Bio, even if he killed Afer, but that was just that was just sad. Yeah, not his best moment, but to his credit, uh, or at least something that can soften the blow, uh, is the fact that, well, the attack was really over before it could even begin. The fact that they were thrown in through such a loop with those two roamers who just made their lives miserable on that first floor, I mean, it just goes to show that yeah, there are some pretty massive chinks in the West Garfield armor right now, and it's something that they've got to work on, because uh, clearly just a slight misdrone, not very many adaptations, really no ability to work their way out of the hole they found themselves in. I mean, it was just that one play, the one misdrone that allowed, that allowed Afer to get misdrone, that allowed Nick to get misdrone, the misdrone, the Malusi who was sitting down below, and it's that that uh, Wes Garfield are going to have to figure out a way to solve as they go forward because Aqualic, clearly they know something and they found something that works. Afer is going to keep playing the visual. He's going to keep ratting around and trying to surprise Wes Garfield if he can. If he can keep doing that, he'll be able to add to his five kill tally and stall out this attack before it can even get started again. Yeah, so far, West Garfield's drone work, which has been a, a bit of a highlight in their past games, you know, that they've won after the, after the roll swap and after they've started winning, is not as prevalent in this game. And whether it's because of their own, uh, you know, lack of drone play, like we saw in the previous round with uh, Mr. Roning, Slimy Nick, or if it's because of all this drone denial, either way, it's massively punishing them. Afer just ran out on Rudy. I'm... I think maybe it was from, like, the pantry window onto spawn. Or maybe... Uh... Oh, it was Astro window. I mean, he'll get refragged, but still. Vigil? Ace? On an AVG defense, Jonah? The only hard breach? I'd take that any day. Yeah, fantastic start for Aqualux. Even though they do lose a body, it is... The body they took down with them, that is most impactful. No more Selma charges. We don't see any secondary hard breach gadgets. No can openers on the side of West Garfield. So they'll have to do this one just with some sheer firepower and sneak their way into the site from elsewhere. They do have four nades in pocket. They do have a lot of explosive potential from below. We can see another mute jammer that Rice is putting down that is likely going to be the target of Valor or Barring's nades as they work their way in from below. Again, that would have been the target had Rudy still been alive, but without that vault wall really having any shot at getting opened now, they're just going to have to focus those nades on getting some kills. Valor misses the first one. Now cooking up the second, looking to take down Gasher. This one has a chance actually heading towards Bar instead, but Rice is not positioned quite that far towards the wall, so he is going to be fine either way. It almost looked like that nade was to clear off like utility, but I'm not sure what utility would be clearing or why that would matter considering they lost their only hard breach, or maybe it was just a little bit of a misplaced drone. But they're turning their attention now towards main stairs, and Psychosis gonna get aggressive after the utility is thrown at him. Valor and Bio both follow up with kills, and what was an advantage for Aqualix has now devolved into Gasher in a one versus four. 
The attack will storm up the main stairs. Twist now taking that control, barring following closely behind Valor already in books, looking to make his entrance into the site as Gasher now rotates underneath. But Twist wow. is still holding him. I'm sure Wes Garfield had some flank drones there. And what started out as losing their hard breach, a terrible position for West Garfield, was amended by the fact that Aqualix, again, fall back into their old habits and overpeak. Old habits, yeah, and I'm surprised to see it here, especially given that we have seen them be so much more disciplined, at least within the first three rounds, than we may have expected, right? There were so many instances where they held an advantage and they said, you know what, let's sit back, let's wait. I mean, just think back to round number one. Again, Aviator in games defense, a 1v2, they had won the trade game, they had, they had stopped the initial execute, and barring was last alive. Rather than both of those players swinging out, taking gunfights, and putting their lives in jeopardy, they said no. Sit back, one player behind the bar, one player sitting in gun vault. They didn't swing, at least for a moment, they waited, and they allowed barring to just kind of sit there and flounder. Complete opposite here in round number four, just a moment ago, where Wes Garfield had very few options at their disposal. Without the hard breach, there's almost nothing you can do to force those defenders out of position. The nades mostly missed. Valor didn't get anything with either of those nades as he tried to clear from below. So much that didn't go Wes Garfield's way. But like you said, Harrison, Aqualix allowed for those opportunities, allowed for those Wes Garfield chances, and... Well, we saw that West Garfield were more than happy to capitalize. Just click on some heads, and there you go. And this whole back and forth and back and forth that, we've, that we're seeing thus far between these two teams has me a little worried, Joe. Because now mm -hmm. that we're halfway through the season, right? Actually, technically past the halfway mark, I no longer have any qualms about using stats because of small sample size. And if we take a look at said stats, Aqualix have a 60% defensive win rate, meaning that... Sure, they get a lot of 3 threes, but they get the 4-2 half more often than not. But on their attack, Jonah, that's a 40% win rate. Oh, boy. So if they do not take this 4-2 half, I really worry for them. Because on the, on, on the, on the other hand, West Garfield have a nearly 60% defensive win rate. So just looking at those stats, it's a little worrying if they don't end up going 4-2, but Gasher will shut down Valor. Rudy and Bio with immediate answers. A for coming back to the site, gets one on Twist, and shuts down that initial site presence along with Case. Sure, Bio and Rudy are there, but as Barring falls, they're the only men left, and the defenders are sitting on top of that diffuser like a chicken on an egg. Afer again claps back onto Bio. Now he and Nick can just hold a crossfire on this diffuser, but no, Nick's not gonna peek. He allows Rudy to pick it up. Plant is going down, they hear it. Nick's gonna start pushing, sprinting in. It'll force Rudy off of that plant, and now Afer's getting aggressive too. Rudy needs to isolate these 1v1s. He'll get one onto Nick. Now it's 1v1 against Afer. Afer's got the superior weaponry, but loses the fight. Rudy going huge. I really thought Aqualix shut that round down, but being allowed to recollect the case and isolate those ones gives the advantage to West Garfield. Well, that's one way to win a round. Good old clutch factor from Rudy. I mean, you give him a DMR, and apparently that's enough. In Siege, those DMRs generally aren't the greatest, but he seemed to have no trouble at all taking those 1v1s and taking the win. Again, Aqualix failing to play together enough. Lack of coordination there in the end. In a 2v1, it is often easy for that one player to exploit individual gunfights. I didn't say easy to win, but easy to exploit those gunfights and allow those opportunities to kind of come back his way, and he did that beautifully. So great job for Rudy, and that's going to put Wes Garfield over the top here and giving them the lead for the first time. Aqualix no longer able to go to a new bomb site and win it. They tried kitchen and dining, and unfortunately it failed. So they will shift things up and head to Trophy and Statuary next. But this is a bomb site that has already gone both ways. First, it was West Garfield Park with a rush. That kind of caught Aqualix off guard and took the site rather easily. But the second time, it was a roam from Aqualix that put them over the top. West Garfield now, as we see the pretty standard attacking lineup that they have shown most of the time so far, they're really going to have to tidy up this roam clear. They cannot allow this defense to exploit those weaknesses again. I mean, it's already not looking great for Aqualix. Again, just considering their uh, attacking win rate. But, I mean, hey, maybe they can pull something out. Either way, they would really like this 3-3 split. Now, in the grand scheme of things, teams' uh, specific stats aside... Villa has become, you know, more and more even, more and more attacker-sided. It is no longer the defender haven it once was. 
So if Oculus get this 3-3, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not too shabby. And they're definitely going to be looking for that. We're we'll looking for Afer to grab a lot of impact on that roam, duoing with Psychosis on the Cade during their off-stream game. Psychosis, I believe, went 1 in 10. Definitely not looking to repeat that poor performance. Ooh, Psychosis swings and gets fried. Barring was ready for that, and Psychosis gives his life away. There is still a player nearby to make something happen. That is Afer, who's looking to go again. He'll actually take this fight with Bio, but again, nice little Finca boost Ooh. gets this attack in fighting shape. It's Valor to actually claim the kill. Gasher here looking like he wants to throw his life away. Yep, there's another player dead. Aqualix really put all their eggs into the let's roam and throw our bodies at the attacker basket here and well it did not work at all it's now a 5v2 with slimy nick and rice last alive looks like uh, nick also wants to get a little bit aggressive potentially maybe eager to just jump out this closet window rudy is potentially in danger but he's positioned around the other side of that master balk so he'll have to wait Nick will have to wait, that is, before he actually takes this fight. But in the meantime, Rice is alone on the site and in a lot of danger. He'll pick up one, but Rudy takes down his teammate, so Rice knows he has to step up. But he steps up right into the waiting arms of Valor. It's Wes Garfield who take that roam clear storm through the defense and just kind of say, you know what, it's a 5v2. Let's not waste any time in pushing the site. Not only was it a good roam clear, but it looked like the Aqualix roamers bit off a little more than they can chew especially because they took those fights individually, right? If they had, you know, tried to maybe pinch on the study peak at the same time, they go one for one, whatever. But Psychosis peaks alone against Barring. Even if he kills Barring, there's backup. Afer then tries to refrag from main stairs, and he's, what, what was he fighting, like three people at once? And it was just Valor who ended up getting that kill? The Robers just kept peeking over and over into the entire team, pretty much. And when you're a roamer, you are looking for those those small, you know, disconnected 1v1 engagements. When you're taking basically a, a 1vx at that point, it doesn't go your way a lot of times. And I, I would probably be singing a different tune if Psychosis and Afer, you know, maybe both went one for one or even two for one on the roam. But the fact that they came away with literally nothing and because they took those fights, wasted very little time, I'm going to call it a wholly unsuccessful roam. And now it's 4-2 half, exactly what I was worried about. Because Aqualix have demonstrated so far that they just have not been very adept at attacking this map consistently. Now it's West Garfield on defense, who will look to close this one out as soon as they can. It's Bio who tries to get aggressive a little early. He'll go for a bit of a spawn peek, but comes up with nothing. So it's Rudy's turn. He'll run out okay. the basement. Sending it out office and just hunting for some frags, but Aqualix not exposed to that angle. Maybe a couple of seconds later and Rudy would have picked up something, but instead he exposes his position, so he will likely tuck tail and run back to the site. For now, Aqualix will be looking to work a long clear. They'll have to work their way through Bio and potentially Twist as well, who's holding over by that brick door. But as Bio drops away, joining his teammate of Rudy down below with that C4, Maybe they'll be looking to pressure this attack elsewhere. C4 goes up and it connects, taking down A for Psychosis only steps away from that position, but he actually manages to stay at full HP, but A for taken down, that is a big loss. And Rudy again showing that despite not playing the game, despite just being a sub, he is still a force to be reckoned with on the map. I mean, 7-4, and four, not just positive, but leading his team in the KD department right now, which is really all you can ask for as a sub, right? Typically, when it comes to those sub roles, a sub on hard support or a sub try to IGL is not the play. Typically, you just stick them on a fragging operator, either direct them with drones or let them play solo, see if they frag out, and if they do, then sick. And Rudy's certainly been doing that, and that's going to leave Aqualix floundering a bit because not only do they lose the opening pick, which heavily deters their entry game that we've seen, I mean, we've seen it time and time again. If they lose that entry pick, they get slammed but they're also losing Afer, the only man who is consistently finding kills. Well, this attack, hoping to get something back. We'll have uh, Nick at the helm trying to get some kills, but he'll take a little bit of damage. It also has Gasher working his way up the 90 hall, supporting Rice, who's looking to get those x Kairos pellets down onto the gun vault wall. Going to have to take care of the mute jammer before that, so a nade will go in and deal with that jammer accordingly. Now this angle should be opened up no problem. You do have barring on the site, 
using these smokes to delay this attack even further. He's got one more of these smokes in pocket to delay this, but with 45 seconds, Aqualix still have a good bit of time to work with and don't have to push in just yet. They're going to have to locate Twist, though. They're going to have to locate Rudy, but he's been spotted out and now forced to back away. Nick taking that gunfight and winning for the most part. Now Dasher it takes a fight onto Barring, who walks out in the middle of the door with a shotgun, and he dies. That was more than questionable from Barring. I guess wanted to go for a cheeky play, but Gasher's just holding his door, and now you've lost your smoke. Rudy is the next to go down as he tries to send it up main stairs. Gets caught, I believe, by Rice playing in 90 as Gasher now walks in and is getting that plant down. Nick, beautiful coverage all the way into Barlands, a headshot. Rice, another psychosis, a third, leaving it all up to Rudy, the man who is down and now picked up. He's got to take this fight on study bout first and foremost, but he gets psychosis in the leg, and the Iana simply pops up and finishes him off. Looked like a pretty good West Garfield round to start off with that kill from Rudy, but the hole in the site left fake and Aqualix stormed through it. The impressive thing that Aqualix was able to do there was maintaining the pace of that attack despite the early loss. Often, when you lose a player or two on the attacking side, you have this plan, you have a structure of how your entries are going to work your way in the building, who's joining them in, all of that is set up beforehand. And when you lose a player, it can kind of throw a wrench in the whole plan, right? It slows things down, and they might fail to get to the bomb site in time. Aqualix did not fall victim to that same issue. They continued to clear up to 90 with the very same pace they would have with five players. They cleared out the players they need to. They forced those roamers back to the site, and by doing that, they left themselves a lot of time on the clock to go for that execute. I highlighted that in the mid round. There was about 45 seconds to about a minute left on the clock and Aqualix were pressuring the site, forcing those smokes out already, not waiting for 20 seconds and then the smokes to come out, forcing Barring to use those smokes to get a little bit active, to get aggressive and stop that execute. By doing that, they allowed themselves to have a bit more time. And I think that's why the attack looked so comfortable when they actually went for that push. Yeah, the plan coverage was definitely there from Aqualix. I guess maybe the biggest mistake from West Garfield was evacuating the site as far afield as they did. Again, you know, giving Aqualix that opportunity. But we'll try AVG once again, and this time we'll see a different clear from Aqualix. This time, uh, you know, going master over, hopefully avoiding Rudy's C4. But now West Garfield have shoved men in their face. It's Twist and Biologic on that roam, supported again by Rudy underneath, making sure that they can't get fragmented from below, maybe even C4 coverage to speak of. Bio getting very aggressive on the window, looking uh, to catch someone, but there's no one there. Twist also playing very far forward, not necessarily looking for a kill, just trying to scare Aqualix from entering the building, and again, you know, waste just that extra couple seconds. Right, this is a similar strategy that West Garfield employed last time, but it's possible we'll see them try to hold this even firmer than before it's gonna be tough because west garfield i mean they've been droned droned out i mean aqualix they spotted out bio easily a4 is gonna have no trouble whipping out the f2 and getting that headshot so well goodbye bio and goodbye what could have been another similarly structured defense instead rudy is gonna have to play this one a bit more passively he doesn't want to give his life away as free as bio just did but he will be holding down this first floor maybe hoping to stall out these nade players who like to pressure in down below. He'll spot out that drone, so that's going to be why he shoots that out, but that means his position also telegraphed. He'll use this C4, pre-placed in an effort to slow this attack down, maybe get a kill as he works his way in, but he's got to be careful, because here comes Slime down below. Ooh, and it looked like Rudy sending up that C4, opening that hole. Psychosis will use it against him, meaning it's a three versus five in the favor of Aqualix. The attack still barreling through. You talked about that pace last round. Although it's been inhibited slightly, it doesn't seem like it's affecting Aqualix too much, especially as Rice nabs another. Now it's just Barring and Valor. Barring off-site with three smoke babes in pocket. I thought it was an, uh, it was kind of doomed to fail, but he will get one on Psychosis. So that's the 90 Repel player now dead. And here coming back to site, those smoke babes finally coming out with about 53 seconds remaining. Again, if you're unaware, the smoke can delay around 10-ish seconds. And, you know, you can space them a little farther apart to maybe cover 12 to 15. So if you're a smart smoke player, you can delay far more than 30 seconds. But again, Barring is pushing out of sight. His teammate's going to need that smoke coverage. Valor is not going to be able to stop the push by his lonesome unless he gets, like, 
a multi-kill C4 or something that he's still got in his pocket, but here comes the smokes once again, barring somehow still finding himself in a position to use them, despite pushing out 90 every single time. An attacker smoke comes out to answer, and with 15 seconds left, Aquavix are gonna need to go for it. Valor hasn't been covering the angle, he's backed off very passively, he'll allow the attack in, C4 goes out, but it's shot in midair. Sure, Barring's able to get one kill, Valor another, and a second for Valor! That leaves Gasher alone, trapped in the corner with an LMG, he'll nab one, but runs right into the shotgun of Barring, giving a triple to the smoke, and somehow West Garfield clutch it up. I think it was a 2v5 at that point in yeah. the round? Jeez, I mean, West Garfield putting on a clinic. I mean, you talked about a good smoke player doing the right thing. It did. It was a little concerning that he was trying to play over in 90 and taking the fight from there. But by working his way back to the site, throwing a smoke, going back to 90, pressuring there with the gun, going back to the site, throwing a smoke. By doing that, Aqualix, I mean, it looked like they were a little bit confused. They didn't know what they were dealing with on the site necessarily. They didn't want to clear through 90 because they knew somebody was pressuring there. In a sense, barring, I mean, made it seem like he was two or three different defenders. As one player, he at least... He at least was able to double the pressure that a normal player would be able to apply by just being in as many positions and as many different positions as possible in the shortest time possible. The one concern there from Aqualux, the one big question mark I've got to ask them is, you know, hey, why didn't you just send it in when you saw him pre-firing you in 90? You've got a 5v1, a 4v1 on the site, even a 3v1. So many chances they had to push into that site when it was understaffed, but instead... They waited and allowed just a good team play and some great shots from Valor to put Wes Garfield over the top. Yeah, I mean, the thing Val Barring was doing was actually really interesting. It's like, uh, uh, you know, this may be incorrect. Oh, maybe maybe Tanner can, can correct me. From what I've heard, you know, they teach you in the military in order to, if you're outnumbered, you know, uh, often switching positions and, you know, blind firing and such to make yourself, uh, uh, makes yourself appear as a larger force than you really are, so you don't simply get overwhelmed. And I guess Barring was trying to play that, just kept psyching Aqualix out over and over, despite it being an SMG-11 firing at them from 90, and then a smoke babe to go through onto the doorway. So, I mean, it has to be the same player. But either way, that was it was weird that Aqualix never really took advantage of Barring being off-site and rushing Valor. So, I mean, now it's a 5-3 to three advantage for West Garfield instead of the 4-4 that I would have expected uh, at, uh, during the... I guess the beginning of the latter half of that round. But at least, you know, if we're going to look at upsides for Aqualix, they have cleared the AVG roam in under a minute. They force Twist back all the way to top red, and if someone ends up taking this one, well, he is armed with the UMP. Good chance that an Aqualix player can get that opening pick. And on this match as a whole, another positive for Aqualix is even though they did just probably get quite demoralized by allowing them to get clutched on, they do have the momentum in a sense. I mean, two attacking rounds back to back where it really looks like they are going to win. Only one of them where they actually do win, but dominant attacking performances nonetheless. If they can just keep up that pattern and keep going with those dominant attacks, they should be in a pretty good spot to at least bridge this two round gap and maybe send us to overtime. But West Garfield again we've seen how impactful each of these individual players can be even in what seem like impossible situations so now on the site it's just both Barring and Rudy really in that position joined by Valor down below you've got Twist on the castle looking to stall out any vertical pressure that's coming in from Aqualix and you've got a bit of a flank being worked now from Biologic. He's on the Jaeger creeping his way around to the main stairs side and he might be looking to get aggressive and catch Aqualix off guard. For now though the focus is on Twist. He has been spotted out and Aqualix will be looking to take him down. It's barring actually the first defender who falls. It is a little odd that the people playing downstairs are Jaeger and Castle. Usually you expect a C4 operator to be there, but Rudy pushes out Boar, gets the trade on Psychosis, shutting down any remaining Rotero drones, but his twist hits the floor, the attackers start to barrel into the site. Gasher misses a lot of shots on Rudy, isn't able to kill him. Afer hits the floor, hopefully he's got a boost to pick himself back up, as Bio finally comes through with the flank, looking like he'll finish off the downed Afer, get immediately refragged by Nick. Valor and Twist are both on the floor, meaning it's all up to the smoke, and he falls to the LMG. Aqualix making a fast push into sight, seeing that opportunity and taking it, win the round.
I mean, you know, the attacking momentum I talked about was definitely still there for Aqualux. It maybe took them a second, and there were some elements they had to get a grips on before they could actually make that execute. But once they decided to go in, I mean, it really was almost every single gunfight going their way. They just downed everyone and well, left Rudy in a brutal position to fend for himself. So another strong attack, like you said at the beginning of that round, Harrison, it was a very expeditious extension clear, roam clear. They worked their way through that study side up through uh, Aviator and Games and just cleared all the way up to 90 pretty, pretty quick as far as the grand scheme of the round is concerned. So Wes Garfield, now it's them who will probably have to do a little bit of thinking about that one, but they'll go back to the site and try to work out what went wrong and maybe correct it if they can. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it was a very similar mistake that we saw to Aqualix, where the defenders were just a little too far afield to stop the attackers at the beachhead. It allows Aqualix through. They get the necessary picks into sight. A lot of downs happening across the map as well, and no kills. I think that might be one of the uh, greatest amount of players downed at the same time without being finished off that I've ever seen. I think there were like three or four people at one point. But either way, Aqualix showing that they're still in this. They're st again, you know, starting to close the gap. They're only one round away, although this time there's a lot more drone denial coming up for West Garfield. Not only the Mute, but the Mozzie as well. And now, you know, it's not a Jaeger in a castle downstairs. Aqualix are going to have to worry about this C4 presence. Well, Nick trying to get some intel while the Mozzie pest on the other side taunts his drone. Oh, I like this. He actually tries to go oh. up and over. That is super smart. So a teammate shooting out the top of the barricade. The drone able to climb its way up and avoid the pest and the information denial that Baya was hoping to provide. Information denial out of the window, Ooh. though. There is still a focus on this defense that has to be cleared out, but a wonderful nade from Psychosis will, will get the job done rather quickly. Twist had no time to react. The nade perfectly cooked the moment it nears that wall, blowing him sky high and, well, once again, opening up the door for Aqualix to push on through. Bio, though, he is going to make sure his impact is felt somehow. He'll take down Afer, and that is not only pretty much the one player you do want to take care of, but again, losing the Finca early. That's a big operator to take off the board. You no longer have that extra health that aids attackers so substantially when they make those pushes. And that is a set of nades off the board. So if they, you know, the attackers end up wanting to clear below where we saw A for position, where we see Gasher right now and Art holding on main stairs, then you've significantly uh, limited their ability to play that vertical game with the nades. And even then, concerning destruction, right? That's a gone six down. You've still got a decent amount for Aqualix, but, you know, they're going to have to definitely be careful with those. Now, Rudy rotates underneath. He's got a C4 in pocket. He'll go ahead and pre-place it where we've seen him pre-place it many times before, right outside the board double. Now that the camera's been shot, you know, he's not going to get a lot of hard info on it, but perhaps a teammate can call out for him. I'm not sure if that impact from the Zoe cleared the Nitro cell. It looks like there still might be two on the board, but no, I think Rudy just tried to, uh, according to the overlay, just tried to hit it and it did not blow up. Psychosis simply peeks into the site. No one's watching the door for Bio, so he hits the floor, barring attempts to run out, and Rice is ready for it meaning it's Valor once again in a 2vx situation. This time Rudy by his side. Rudy's going to peek out, get aggressive. Psychosis doesn't expect it. Psychosis actually dies with a nade in his hand and ends up team killing Gasher. A lot of times it won't have that indicator when you get killed like that. That's unfortunate. But as Rudy falls, Valor's alone. He gets the planter, looks to transition to Rice, lands the headshot, and Valor clutches up once again to give West Garfield the confirmed point. Well, Valor is on something else right now. I mean, that is back-to-back. -back, well, not back-to-back, -back, but two separate instances of Valor proving insanely good in the clutch. Again, it was a 2v1. Valor, one of those players, but this time it was him alone in a 1v2. He had to be the one to get the job done, and, well, he was able to do it. Uh, nice little flashy end as well. Taking down the planter, whipping around to that brick's door, and perfectly placed crosshair placement right on the head of the Habana, who really didn't stand a chance in that engagement. So again, a rocky, rocky start for West Garfield. Aqualix, they are looking good on these attacks just until they're not. Just until that coordination falls out the window. It seems like this is a problem that Aqualix have now had on several occasions where they have an advantage a substantial one even in the case of these 4v2s and these 5v2s that we've seen they'll have these substantial margins and then they just 
throw all that coordination out the window. They say just let's send it on in. And that is exactly where Valor has been thriving all map long. Wes Garfield now on match point. An inability to close out. Big problem for Aqualix. That's kind of like their two main gripes on attack. One, if they lose the entry, they tend to be hampered a bit. And two, they struggle to close out a lot of these rounds. And I'm not sure if it's just the teams they're playing take advantage of that you know, transitionary stage between the setup and the actual execute itself, or whether Aqualix may get a little ahead of themselves, forget that the defenders can push back while they set up. But either way, it, it's been a problem that's plagued them all throughout the stage so far, even past seasons before, and especially that clutch from Valor. I know he's hyped about that because I, I know you know he and Rice are, are part of the, I think, still part of the same friend group. So a little bit of rivalry going on there. But again, the main stairs hold that we talked so much about that we actually surprisingly haven't seen, Jonah. I don't know if you were as surprised as I was to not see mm -hmm. really any main stairs clears yeah. so far. I'm happy to see uh, you know if Aqualix can get their stuff together and uh, take barring out economically. Yeah, it's funny. We prefaced the entire map with that little tidbit, and it seems like every single time we've seen these clears from the master side, right? Clearing up through 90, not bothering to take main and study control as the first approach of the attack. But finally, it looks like all of that will change now as Aqualix have droned out barring several times, are expending some utility on this position, but as such, West Garfield will counter it with some utility of their own. Bio has already used two of those toxic smokes to delay any sort of push up the main stairs, trying to hold this off as long as he can. Now the combination of that pressure from that Shumika launcher from Valor to uh, put some flames on those stairs to stall out that pressure. The attack, again, burning utility. We saw a nade just get expended on that position, but something they may not have realized is that West Garfield have backed off. Everyone, they made the call. They said, you know what? Let's back off this position. We wasted time. We wasted utility. Now let's just hold the site. I mean, yeah, over half the round before Aqualix finally storm in and take main stairs, despite not getting any kills, I'd still call that a rather successful main stairs hold. I mean, Gasher's exhausted of nades, Afer only has one more, Psychosis is completely out, Destruction very limited against a Twist with a BP, Bio and Valor both with shields, a lot of that cover in sight might go undestroyed because of how much Aqualix had to dedicate to that main stairs clear. At least they're still finding info on site how stale that'll be by the time the execute comes around relies, uh, you know, heavily on defender positioning, but it's barring downstairs to get that opening pick onto Gasher, not only the opener, but dropping Case in his sight line as well. Nick will be able to get away with that Case and leave Barn to his own devices downstairs, but out comes Biologic. One pumps A for down, a second to finish him off. Sn Nick looking for the refrag, but Barn not exposing himself, looks away at the wrong moment. Bio gets that kill, twist another, and it all falls on the shoulders of Psychosis and a one versus four. Excellent flick onto Rudy, but is it gonna be enough? He'll have to ace to try and win this. Valor is holding so passive on this angle, daring him to push through and ends up finishing it off. West Garfield will give Aqualix their third loss of Villa, 7-4. to four. They really should stop going to this map. I think if they could go to Villa again after today, oh boy, that's going to be a troubling one. But for the most part, they played this one solid. They had their moments. They looked pretty good, 7-4. to four. The overall Ooh. score, not 7-3, to three, but still a valiant effort from them. West Garfield, a win that they are going to be happy to secure. Again, the midpoint in this season, like we talked about, both these teams formerly a little bit close on the scoreboard. West Garfield only one point above, well, two points, one spot above Aqualix on the leaderboard. But now they're going to be definitely boosted up that with the full three points you get from a regulation win. Yeah, I mean, West Garfield... Gonna be super thankful for that one. I know. I don't know if we switched off of the game as well uh, during that MVP screen. Barring said in all chat, Gasher, you might want to look at uh, prepping map bans. A little bit of, a little bit of shade there being thrown again. I mean, questionable that Aqualix go back to Villa with only like a 50% win rate on it. Now they're two for five, I think. Uh, hopefully, looking to get in some different maps in the coming uh, in the coming stages or I guess in the coming days stage one isn't over yet what am I saying yeah. we're gonna go back to the analyst desk for this game and uh, discuss just how upset they are with Villa being chosen for the fourth time in the past two months 7-4 is an interesting scoreline because that's the scoreline that you can either say hey that was the closest 7-4 you've ever seen 
Or you can say, yeah, that was a 7-4 one team won pretty decisively. And I think that's what we had here. But even in the wind forceful, I know and using round eight as a good example, there were criticisms that you had of the utility usage on the side of West Garfield. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They missed. They missed everything. Like you got barring like it's a 2v4 in round eight. You know, Barring's got two smokes in his pocket. There's like 20 seconds left on the board, and he's playing by 90, trying to, you know, jiggle peak uh, against, you know, Afer. And it's just like, what are you doing? Why? Why are you there? You know, he should be inside of sight, throwing those smokes, toss them. He eventually got called off. I imagine, you know, someone went, hey, you've got two smokes in pocket, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Go finish it out. But then he proceeds to come back into sight and miss a smoke. And then, you know, there's a C4 in the hands of... Uh, his teammate and his teammate throws it and and he misses the c4 or it gets shot one of the it gets shot it got shot and and, and then there's a goyo place to deny plant or to stop the execution at the very least prepped on the wall no one shoots it and the kid is just sitting there he could have shot it he had like 40 seconds to shoot it he could have shot it in the last 15 seconds that's a lot of damage that's a lot of denial and it just seemed to be like the story of west garfield park i really feel like we're coming into this game they are a stronger team but if I'm bio, I'm drilling utility usage because that was abysmal. It wasn't just that round. We saw it on round 10 too. You know, they're missing two C4s. They're missing smokes. It's just, it was really, really bad to see because, you know, they had to rely to their gun skill. And, you know, granted, they've got some real shooters on the team. You know, uh, Valor came to play. Rudy came to play. Barring had his moments. But at the same time, you know, you're making it way more difficult than you had to. Aqualix was just not taking map control. And that utility usage, especially the time denial, like smokes, Goyos, Tachanka, C4s, like those really come into, you know, they're, they're really vital in the critical seconds of the end, last minute of the round. And they just, they were non-existent. They missed everything. Now, compiling this to the the tough streak that Aquilix has been on Connor, it just makes it a little bit worse when it sounds like, well, West Garfield had an imperfect game and Aquilix just still can't seem to do anything about that. Once again, on Villa, I can't stress that enough. <laughs> Yeah, the Villa choice, once again, it's just, it feels like Aqualix, just either they're not prepped, they're not comfortable in other maps, or there's something going on behind the scenes that's mm. causing them to just put themselves at the bottom of a hill and try to just climb up. When you're facing against a team that is just as mechanically gifted as you with just as much experience, if not more, I'd actually argue that West Garfield Park has a lot more experience, it's going to be so incredibly hard to try to fight up that mountain. And kind of like make a molehill and then all of a sudden it's it's a lot bigger and you have bio and rudy who are really good at just punishing players that know less than them you know they're punching down in a way and they're always just going to be looking good and then you have valor just kind of running around on Cade, causing problems in the late round really finding gaps and struggling or kind of forcing you to struggle if you're in miscommunication happens at all like that 2v1 that we saw on the second to last round never should have happened why is the mm -hmm. plant not going down in a place that can be covered why is the player on bricks not watching the kind of the only place that the plant can be denied from being that split doorway now we have tons of outside perspective on this match but i want to get a bit more of an inside perspective we're going to bring bio back in for the interview as we've talked to him so many times before bio congratulations on the win but this was, so first off, we had a bit of a criticism on our end with some of the utility usage, whatnot, but you guys still had a great game in other ways. What were your thoughts on the use of your team's utility, maybe operator picks, anything like that? Are you talking about from like attacking standpoint? Uh, it, mostly defense. on defense, but there was there was uh, questionability on both. Yeah. On defense, it kind of got like mixed up because we were trying to adjust on the fly with like mm. how to approach what Dash's team was doing so we we're kind of adjust on the fly there's kind of mix up on like who's picking what i think one round like rudy showed smoke and then valor went Cade, but then rudy for some reason got off smoke and then went mute so we didn't have a shield <laughs> so on that defensive round oh, okay. i was just saying like oh we have to get aggressive because you know, we don't have any shields we can't really play utility so like we got to push for picks and then we had info on a lot of the kills we were getting because those guys put pre-placed drones like candy so i was mozzie i think i got like two drones so i just had them around and we we're just swinging off info okay, and then, okay and then on attack um kind of didn't bring any like normal utility because they we were kind of just rushing like for some reason they took us to villa and they didn't change anything they did on villa so you could give me attack a repick i'm just going to pick a lineup to beat that defense which yeah. like we we're doing 
Well, that was kind of my question. You mentioned yesterday how, you know, bringing Rudy in, obviously he's getting kills, but there's less time with the team, less experience on some of those newer maps, and yet everything goes back to Villa again. That must have been a pretty big bonus when you saw Villa pop up. I mean, yeah, Rudy, Rudy knows how to play Villa. He knows all the characters, so he can just play whatever. So on some of the rushes, he didn't have a set character. He just went with, oh, we're going to do this. Like, I'll bring dope since you guys are just crotch mm -hmm. in the basement. You don't have to drone. We'll just call crotch in the basement and just hit site. So... Well, Doke definitely paid off. I think it was round five, I believe, when he clutched up with yeah, the Doke to be in the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was impressive to watch. Well, congratulations, Bio. A well-earned victory for you guys. Uh, and we'll talk soon later in the season, I'm sure. Right. Have a good day. Have a good one. So, Tanner, that kind of, I don't know, clears things up a little bit that, you know what, things have changed up a lot with them bringing in, you know, that sub player. Things are kind of up in the air. Sometimes things get mixed up. It's easy for us to criticize on the outside. Mm. And they are worthy criticisms. I'm not taking away from your points, but sometimes you do get that inner perspective. Sometimes you're like, okay, yeah, things might not be as clean or as easy as it seems, you know, on the outside looking in. But that's just the first match out of the day. We've got plenty more left on the day. Next up, it's going to be Nocturnes taking on Gaming Gladiators. Man, these names are a mouthful sometimes. Just in a few minutes.